morning. My name is Jennifer Hickey. Uh, today I'm going to walk you through a series of Ruby applications. My goal for this presentation is for you to see how easy it is to deploy your applications to Cloud Foundry and for you to be able to get started deploying your own Ruby applications to Cloud Foundry. Uh, to that end, please do make note of the promo code here on the first slide, Cloud Today. Uh, it will get you instant approval for a free cloudfoundry.com account. Before we get started, I'd like to just take a few minutes to introduce Cloud Foundry and its value proposition. So let's start by discussing some of the challenges facing us with modern applications. For one, end users expect to be able to access applications from their smartphones. Uh, in fact, smartphone sales took over PC sales uh, well over a year ago. And to that end, users expect kind of a rich, dynamic experience on both their mobile devices and their browsers. Uh, so that's something else that has to be addressed with today's modern applications. Uh, another challenge, recent challenge, uh, is social networks. So these, they are huge and growing and posing a couple of challenges for developers. Uh, one, of course, is that applications need to integrate with social networks, yet graphs are challenging data structures to scale in general. And moreover, users often discover applications through social networks, which leads to viral and explosive growth. Uh, this is probably a good problem to have, but it can be a capacity planning nightmare for your little application. And speaking of scalability, there's also an explosion of data. So there's more data than ever, more sources for data creation than ever, and more needs for data than ever, which of course leads to higher expectations about data availability. In order to handle this kind of data load, we have to start thinking about using horizontally available distributed NoSQL solutions. And then, of course, there's new infrastructures as well. So we're looking at several different places that we can deploy our apps, virtualization, cloud, platform as a service. There's a lot to think about with today's modern applications. But the solution to help you with your modern application woes is platform as a service. So a patch should make it easy and fast to deploy, manage, and scale your apps and give you access to services such as database and messaging. Cloud Foundry is the first open source PaaS. Uh, which means you have a choice of clouds and you have a choice of infrastructures to use. There's no vendor lock-in. You shouldn't have to lock into a specific cloud when developing or deploying your app. You should be able to take your app and deploy it to any cloud or even no cloud if you run it locally. And fundamentally, this means that we should not ask you to make too many changes to your application. On Cloud Foundry, it should just work, and we're going to see some examples of that shortly. So this slide kind of describes Cloud Foundry. Uh, on the top, we have the variety of frameworks and runtimes that we support. Uh, so you can see we do offer Spring and Grails for Java applications, Scala support, Node.js, and then the Ruby options, which we'll be exploring further in this session. We also offer a variety of data and messaging services, including both relational and NoSQL. We'll see some of that today. And then you can see that we offer a variety of deployment options. So you can deploy your application to uh, either the public cloud at cloudfoundry.com, uh, private clouds offered by partners, or microcloud, uh, which is actually a cloud that you can run on your own laptop, and that's available for download. And all of this is backed by an open source code base that's Apache licensed and available on GitHub. So specifically, how does Cloud Foundry support Ruby applications? Cloud Foundry offers a few Ruby runtimes, uh, one is Ruby 187. We also offer Ruby 192. And those will be updated and changed uh, in the future. And since Cloud Foundry was actually started, uh, we've supported both Sinatra and Rails apps. Um, however, we have a new framework uh, available on cloudfoundry.com now, uh, which is RAC. And RAC support was actually a community contribution, so another uh, benefit of being an open source product. We have that available now. And a new option that's coming soon, uh, which is support for standalone applications. Uh, so these are a category of applications uh, that really don't use a framework to run. Um, workers are kind of one of the more common examples of that. So these are long-running applications um, that basically run independently. Um, and we're actually going to be seeing a sneak peek of that uh, shortly. So you, you'll be amongst the first people to see that in action. OK, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to actually start out with a Rails 3.2 application. Uh, so I searched on GitHub for a good Rails 3.2 example. Uh, and this is the one that I found, Rails pre-launch sign up. Uh, so this is basically just an application uh, for a web startup pre-launch page. 
It allows users to come in and re request invitations to your site once it's up. So I've cloned this application locally, and I'm going to actually go ahead and push it up to Cloud Foundry now. Uh, before I do, there's one thing that I want to mention. Uh, since this is one of the newer Rails applications, um, it does make use of the, the Rails asset pipeline. So Cloud Foundry will run all of your Rails applications in production mode. Uh, this means if you are using the asset pipeline, you do need to make sure that you run Rake Assets precompile uh, prior to pushing your application to Cloud Foundry. In the interest of time today, I'm not going to do that, but it's something to keep in mind with some of the newer Rails applications. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and push to Cloud Foundry now uh, using VMC, which is our command line tool for interfacing with cloudfoundry.com and other Cloud Foundry uh, implementations. And that's available as a Ruby gem. So the command to create the application is VMC push. Now for all Ruby applications, we do offer the default runtime of Ruby 1.8. In this case, I want to use Ruby 1.9, so I'm going to override that. Okay, what I like to deploy from the current directory. Yes, that's where my application is. I am going to name the application webinar launch. VMC is detected that this is a Rails application that I'm pushing, which is correct. It's assigned a URL, that one seems fine. And the default memory seems fine as well. Now I can choose to have a number of instances of this application running to field traffic. Uh, in this case, we're going to stick with one instance for the time being. So I want to create services to bind to webinar launch. Uh, so this application, like most Rails applications, uses a relational database. So I do want to provision a relational database service to use with the application. In this case, I'll choose MySQL and I'm going to name the app UserDB. No other services. And then I'm asked if I'd like to save this configuration. Uh, I'll say yes, and this will write the configuration to a YAML file that will make it easier for future deployments, and we'll show the details of that a little bit later. So now I'm uploading to Cloud Foundry. Uh, you can see actually that my upload size is relatively small at 25K, so VMC is only going to upload the resources in my application that Cloud Foundry has not seen before and cached. Uh, so this makes for a nice light payload. Okay. And one thing about Rails applications is uh, sometimes they take a little longer to start on Cloud Foundry because we do run the rake db migrate command. Uh, so in this case, as you can see, there was an error um, because the client timed out waiting for the server to report started state. But our app is likely still started and good. So let's take a look at the logs and see if that's true. Okay, lots of stuff in the logs. So one thing I wanted to point out to you is, as I mentioned before, we do run DB Migrate to set up your database schema ahead of time. So you can see that my MySQL service has been provisioned with the appropriate tables for this application. And if I look at the standard outlog here at the bottom, I can see kind of the standard Rails server startup message. Uh, so it looks like things are good. So one thing that's interesting to note is when I cloned this application, uh, I didn't make any changes to the database config. So if I show kind of the standard database.yaml file that Rails uses, uh, you can see that my production database here is configured to use SQLite. So how do we actually manage to connect to the MySQL service that we provisioned on this account? Uh, this is a feature that we call auto reconfiguration. Uh, it's available in a number of different ways for pretty much all of the Ruby applications, and we'll see several examples of it. In this case, Cloud Foundry detected that you had provisioned a single relational database service, and so it replaced the configuration properties when you deployed. So without having to make any changes to your application, we've automatically hooked it up to that MySQL service, and we would have done the same thing with Postgres. The one thing I had to do to my app to make this happen uh, was to add the MySQL2 gem to the gem file, so or similarly the PG gem if I was going to use Postgres. Uh, but aside from that, Cloud Foundry took care of the rest and hooked me up automatically. So let's have a look at the website that we've just deployed. And if you're following along at home, uh, you can actually hit this website right now. It's public. So we've gone to webinar launch cloudfoundry.com, and there is our pre-launch lineup page. So at this point, I could request an invitation and wait for that to come to me. Uh, but I think what I'd like to do is just go ahead and, and log in, uh, perhaps with some seed data. So if I go back to the application and take a look, I can see that I have a seed file inside the application uh, that will automatically create 
a user for me to use when I'm logging in. So what I want to do now is actually remotely connect to my Rails application on Cloud Foundry and run the command to seed the database with this data. And I can do that through the VMC Rails console command. VMC Rails console essentially just connects you uh, to a remote Rails console process very similar to one that you might run locally. Okay, you'll notice that it's actually pushing an application. Um, this application is Caldecott. It kind of allows us to do the remote connection. Um, so this is a one-time operation where it will push this application up to your account, and this allows us to talk remotely uh, to your Rails app. And now you can see it's returned a prompt uh, for my Rails console. So we're just going to run as a system command rake db seed. And this should actually take care of putting the data into the database for us so that we can log into the site. And it's returned some information. Uh, the most important thing is the bottom line there where it says new user is created. So I should be able to go back to the website and log in with my seeded user. And it looks like I've signed in successfully. So I could do things such as edit my account, cancel my account, et cetera. So now you've seen that in, in a few short steps, uh, we've taken a Rails app from GitHub and pushed it out to Cloud Foundry and then interacted remotely with it to populate the database through the BMC Rails console. Our next example is actually going to be a Sinatra app, and we're going to explore the concept of auto reconfiguration a little bit more. So this app is another one that I searched for on GitHub. I was looking specifically for a Sinatra app that would use a, a NoSQL service this time. Um, and I found Lamer News, which is a blog engine uh, that uses Redis for key value storage. So again, I've cloned that. And once again, we're going to use VMC to push this locally. Call it webinar news this time. Text is a Sinatra application. URL is fine. Memory. Once again, we'll stick with one instance this time. Do we want to bind existing services to webinar news? No. But we do want to create a new service of type Redis. Okay. And we'll call this service blog store. And once again, I'll save the configuration for future use. And we're uploading a whopping 1K up to Cloud Foundry. And we've quickly started webinar news. So one thing I want to show before we actually look at the application running is the Redis configuration. So if I go into the application file, one second, I've got the new copy. you get for running through the webinar ahead of time. <laughs> okay, this is the original. Uh, so if I go into the file, uh, you can see here that I've done the Redis connection um, using just the Redis client, and it uses a constant for host and port. So basically this means the app will connect to you know, a local Redis server on a specified port. But once again, I've deployed it to Cloud Foundry without making any changes. And let me check one. And because I was using my uh, modified example, I'm just going to hack something real quick and then push an update. Pay no attention. Okay. So now I'm just updating the application um, back to the original example that I wanted to show. So now we're in good shape again. And we know that we're using a local Redis connection. So let's go ahead and check out the website. Okay, looks like I've got a blog site up. Let's log in and create an entry. Okay. Call it Ruby Webinar Roundup. 
and let's say working with Sinatra. Okay, so now we've actually posted something to the blog. Now if we go back and check out the log files for the application, We'll note here in the log uh, that the auto reconfiguration for Redis did kick in. So you'll see that we found a Redis service and we were able to change that local connection uh, to a connection directly to the Redis service. Okay, now let's say we actually want to kind of poke around in that Redis service itself, see what's going on in the key value storage. Uh, so we do offer a command called VMC Tunnel, which allows you to make direct connection to all of the services that you've provisioned on Cloud Foundry. So this includes relational databases, NoSQL, uh, Rabbit, basically all of the services. So if I run VMC Tunnel, it'll show me the services that I've created. In this case, let's create a tunnel to our blog store Redis service. Restarting Caldecott app. And now it's come back and asked me uh, if I want to start a tunnel with no client or the Redis CLI client. So if I chose no client, basically at this point, the tunnel would just remain open and it would give me all the connection properties to run any of my favorite clients that might connect to this Redis service, if I had a UI or something like that. Uh, but it's also detected a default client locally, which is Redis CLI. So I'll start that up. And now I'm actually connected to the Redis service that I provisioned on Cloud Foundry and I can interact with it just as I would a local service. So for example, I could look at the keys and verify that I do in fact have several Redis keys. Um, corresponding to my blog entries. And actually, it looks like some people might be using it out there. So <laughs> we get some real-time data in there. I see a couple of, uh, of other names besides myself. OK, so that's basically how to uh, tunnel into services and a quick show of the auto reconfig with Sinatra. But now, let's say that we want to revisit the concept of auto reconfig for a moment. So basically, we, we use this as a way to get started very quickly uh, with your Ruby application. So you can see I kind of clone it from GitHub without changing anything. I play it to Cloud Foundry, and it just works. Uh, however, for more sophisticated versions of the application, you might want to take control of your service bindings. Uh, one example would be if you have, say, multiple Reddit services with different names. So you might want to you know, kind of direct your code as to which service to connect to. In that case, auto reconfiguration is going to be disabled. Uh, we can't know which service you want to connect to, and we're not going to try to figure it out. So for that case, we've actually offered um, a gem called CF Runtime, uh, which basically allows you to make connections to Cloud Foundry services very easily from within your Ruby code. And now I'm going to remodify this application to make use of that. So I'll start by going back into our app.rb file. And I'll add the require statement for CF Runtime. And then I'll change this local connection here to use the CF Runtime gem. Okay, so I'm using the Redis client.create method. Uh, which basically, again, will pick a single service of type Redis. However, there are also methods that I could say create from service and give it a specific service name. And CF Runtime and Auto Reconfiguration both use kind of a number of set supported libraries. Uh, so for example, in this case, we, uh, we are using the Redis gem, which is already being used by this application. Uh, so since that's the case, uh, we can use the Redis gem to make a connection and return you that, that Redis client. So for a full list of supported clients, uh, you can check out support.cloudfounder.com uh, to find out if this will work for you. If there are other clients that you prefer to use, uh, the CF Runtime Gym does still offer some lower level uh, method calls to get all the connection properties, such as URL, uh, username, and password. So you can still use this gem um, to make connections with any of your favorite clients, and it kind of takes out some of the headache of the JSON parsing uh, for all the services information, uh, which some of you who have already started with Cloud Foundry may be aware of. So I'm going to save this, and then I'm going to go to the gem file and add the CF Runtime gem. repackage my bundle real quickly so that gem is there. And then we'll do another VMC update. OK, 
Okay, the app is back up. So if we go back again, do a refresh, of course we still see our data since we're connected to the same Meta service, uh, but now I can add a comment. So let's say now with CF from time. Okay, and the comment is added. So one more thing to verify that we are in fact not using auto reconfig anymore. So if we go back to the logs, you can see that the auto reconfiguration messages that we saw previously at the bottom are no longer there. Uh, so basically because I'm using the CF runtime gem, Cloud Foundry knows that I want to take control of my own service bindings and does not attempt auto reconfiguration. Uh, similarly, if you want to disable auto reconfig um, and you don't want to use the CF runtime gem, uh, you can do that by creating a config file uh, and enabling a property. And again, there's information on that um, on cloudfoundry.com. Okay, so now we've gone through some Rails apps and a Sinatra app, uh, and we've shown auto reconfiguration in various forms, and hopefully you've seen how easy it is to get started quickly with Rails and Sinatra on Cloud Foundry. Uh, now comes the bleeding edge part of the demo. Um, so I'm going to be showing um, standalone and rack support with a single application. So what I'm going to be using for this demo uh, is one of the samples that's included with Rescue. Uh, so you, uh, you may be familiar with Rescue. Uh, it's a Redis-backed Ruby library for creating background jobs, placing them on queues, and processing them later. So it uses a shared Redis queue, essentially, uh, to have workers consuming off the queue. And the demo that we're going to show uh, that's included with Rescue is just in the examples uh, demo folder, so I've cloned that locally. And what that's going to do uh, is basically start two different applications. So one will be our server process where we actually have a web application that we can add jobs to the queue for processing. And then we'll show standalone application support by actually deploying workers to Cloud Foundry um, that will consume jobs off the queue. So since this is kind of bleeding edge, at least the standalone is, uh, I can't use cloudfoundry.com, so I'm going to use my local cloud. Okay. So one thing, let me just do a listing of the files here. So as I mentioned before, um, the server process that allows us to add jobs is a rack application. Uh, so Cloud Foundry will detect it as a rack application because of the presence of the config.ru file and then it will run rackup config.ru. Uh, so as I mentioned, this is relatively new support for rack applications, but it is available on cloudfoundry.com today. So let's start by pushing that. Okay, we'll call it rescue server. Text it as a rack application. So we're going through getting the URL, memory assigned, instances. And this time we're going to create a Redis service, and we'll call it work queue. Once again, we're going to save this configuration, and in a minute we'll actually go back and explore what the saved configuration looks like. And so now we're pushing the rescue server application to Cloud Foundry on my local cloud. And we're up. And actually, uh, you may notice, too, if you take a look at this application, it uses the same Redis client to make a connection to a local Redis server. So once again, auto reconfiguration is helping us uh, with both the, client, the server application and the worker applications and automatically hooking us up to the proper shared Redis queue. Okay, so let's take a look at the server application here. Relatively simple, just allows us to push a button and create some new jobs. And then we can actually view a little bit more detail about the number of jobs we have on the queues and how many workers we have working on the queues. So we've got a few jobs now, and what we need is some workers to process them. So let's go back to the command line. And now let's actually take a look at these manifest files that we've been saving as we've been doing the VMC pushes. Uh, so these are just YAML files that essentially give VMC all the information it needs to push my application. Uh, this is useful in case I have to delete and redeploy the application or to give to others uh, who want to get your application up and running quickly. So VMC will basically look for a manifest YAML file uh, in the directory and use that if it finds it. Uh, there's also a switch that you can use on VMC push uh, dash dash manifest to point it to any other manifest file. 
So you can see here just all the various properties that I've entered into VNC for my Rescue Server app. And because VNC will use manifest.yaml uh, by default, I'm going to rename it to server manifest.yaml. Because what I'm going to do, since the worker app has the same code base, I'm going to push once again from the same directory, uh, but this time I'm going to be giving kind of a different way of starting the application. So I don't want the manifest.yaml file uh, getting read by VNC. And I actually already have a manifest file for the workers. Um, which I'll just use to quickly copy the start command, but we'll walk through the process of deployment. So once again, if you're familiar, VNC push. Uh, let's call it rescue worker this time. It's detected a rack application because we're still in the same directory and there's a config.ru, uh, but in this case we don't want that, so we'll say no. And it gives us a list of frameworks to choose from. In this case I'm going to pick the new option, which is standalone. So standalone applications, essentially uh, it's just a package of bits, uh, whatever is self-contained within your application that you can push up to Cloud Foundry. Um, and then you can provision a Cloud Foundry runtime uh, to actually execute your application. So in this case, um, it's defaulted to Ruby 1.8 because it found some Ruby files in my directory, and that's fine, that's what I want it to use. And this will make Ruby 1.8 available on the path so that when I enter a start command, uh, which is basically just what it sounds like, a command that tells uh, Cloud Foundry what to run anytime your application is started, I can just use bundle and rake uh, or Ruby uh, without having to fully qualify the path because I'm using the Ruby 1.8 runtime, so that's been set up for me. So in this case, I'm actually going to use rake. There's a rake file within the application that sets off the REST key workers. Um, I've connected it to my default queue. And this is the command that will get used when the application started. Now another new feature uh, is basically choosing not to have a URL. Uh, so essentially there are some standalone applications that may want a URL if you're handling web requests uh, or opening up a web port. However, rescue workers really don't need it, um, so we're not going to provision one. Default memory is fine there. Uh, we're going to start out actually with one instance of the workers here, uh, but we'll show scaling up momentarily. Do we want to bind existing services? Yes, we need to be working off that same shared Redis queue that we provisioned before. So let's select work queue. So that's all we need to do. Let's save it again. And we'll go ahead and push it up. Okay. So at this point we have workers uh, that have been pushed. And if they did their, well actually a single worker I should say. And if it did its job properly, then those jobs that we added to the queue should already be consumed. So let's take a look at the log. Okay, so two things to note here. One, again, at the top, uh, that we did perform Redis auto reconfiguration. Um, but also you can see here that the worker has come online and processed those three jobs that we added earlier. And we can go back to the website and verify that as well. So you can see we have zero jobs and we've detected one worker working. So you can imagine in a situation where we have a, a single Redis queue um, that we could have high traffic load and maybe want to scale up the number of workers that are consuming off the queue. Well, that's very easy to do with Cloud Foundry. So I simply say VNC instances rescue worker plus two, and that'll bring me up to three workers working off the queue instantaneously. And if I go back here and refresh, you can see I now have three workers handling the job. So we've taken quite the tour today uh, of Cloud Foundry Ruby support, including some cutting edge features uh, that I hope you guys have enjoyed seeing. What are some of the key takeaways from this presentation? Well, hopefully the first one is that Cloud Foundry is the best place to run your Ruby apps. Um, if you try and find that you don't agree, please let us know uh, on the, the support forums. Uh, we'd love to hear your feedback. But Cloud Foundry makes it easy to deploy and manage your Rails, Sinatra, Rack apps. Um, and one of the ways that we do this is by automatically connecting your Ruby application to your data and messaging services without code changes. We also offer the CF Runtime Gem that can be used for easy access to these services within your app. And then just a few more key takeaways uh, for kind of daily use of Ruby. Uh, we do manage your dependencies with the provided gem file.lock, so it's highly recommended that you use Bundler uh, for dependency management within your application. You can't necessarily rely on any gems being present if you don't. Another key takeaway is that Cloud Foundry runs your Rails apps in production mode. 
uh, and we do automatically apply DB migrations. And so for some of the newer Rails apps, you may need to pre-compile your assets before you deploy. And the last takeaway is that you've seen that support for standalone applications is coming soon. Uh, so please do keep checking um, either on the blogs or on cs.com. So what's next? Well, we'd love for you to try out your apps and give us feedback. Uh, once again, we have the promo code here uh, for sign up for a free account. You can peruse the source code on cloudfoundry.org that will link you to our GitHub page. I'd recommend that you also download Micro Cloud Foundry. Uh, it's the VM that allows you to run the entire Cloud Foundry setup on your local machine. And you can learn more about what I've talked about today and many other Cloud Foundry topics on the Cloud Foundry blog. So thank you very much for attending. Thank you, Jennifer. Um, and thanks, everybody, for joining.